Good morning, ladies. I hope you're having a great day. It's amazing today there were snow flurries in parts of my county, and then this afternoon it's supposed to be in the 70s. I mean, in the 50s, and so it's just one of those crazy times when it's bitter cold and then very, very warm. Um, recently, I read a blog by a gentleman who has already gone to heaven this year, and the the theme of his blog was theologically rich Christmas carols. Well, if you were in the office with me this morning, you would hear instrumental Christmas carols playing in the background because I love the instrumental music of the carols that we love so much. And so I thought we would just kind of look at some of these carols and glean some thoughts that will help us as we sing them because we often sing them from memory. But I want us to sing them this year with a little bit different approach. So today I want to talk to you about old little town of Bethlehem. Philip Brooks penned these words in 1868. That was during the aftermath of the Civil War in America, not a very calm time in our history. But the words came to him one night when he was riding from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Listen to verse 1. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above the deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Can you imagine that dark night that Mr. Brooks was making this trip long before street lamps, <laughs> that everlasting light. And then think back hundreds of years when that star originally shone so brightly that it caught the attention of the Magi in the East. And then for several years they journeyed until they came to the spot where the star stood over the place where Mary and Joseph were with the, with the young child Jesus. Can you imagine their conversations as they were making that trip, wondering what they would find and what their reaction would be? Verse 2 says, For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above, while mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wondering love. O oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to men on earth. When I think about the world in which we live, if Christ had not been born, how much worse it would be? You think just of the chaotic events, the unrest, the ugliness, the hatred that we are observing. But Christ was born, and he does live within the hearts of those of us who have accepted him, and we are lights in a very dark place. And his holy birth allows us to have a part in bringing peace to men here on the earth. Verse 3 goes on to say, How silently, how silently this wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. This verse reminds us that salvation is a gift. It is not something we can purchase, and we certainly could never earn it. It is simply freely given to all who humbly accept our sinfulness in need of a Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
once we acknowledge and confess our sin, God extends salvation to us, purchased by the blood of our Lord Jesus. So when we, meek souls, receive him, he comes in. And that's a personal choice for every man, woman, boy, or girl. The last verse says, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us. Our Lord, Emmanuel. Not only are we given salvation and eternal life, the Holy Spirit indwells each of us who have accepted Christ. He abides with us. He guides our steps. He corrects us. And he strengthens us. What more could one ask? This morning on my commute, I heard a podcast. And the uh, speaker's challenge to us was, how often do you ask God for more of himself? and not for the things he can do or the blessings he provides, just for more of himself. Those gifts, the gift of himself, is indescribable. It's precious, but it's priceless. May we never lose the wonder of that. So amidst the hustle and the bustle of this season, may we never forget Jesus is the reason for the season. Merry Christmas.